Now, Joe Biden is facing some pressure here, but it's not from other politicians. It's from people like you and people like me and younger people, Gen Z, that have had enough with these damn prices. They have had enough with the cost of living in the United States. Now, this comes out from Common Dreams. We're going to start off with the article, and then I want have a, a clip that I want to show you as well. You guys should follow Common Dreams. They actually have pretty good uh, articles here. So they have signs that say, don't push us out. Stop predatory equity. After the latest Fed rate hike, housing justice activists demand Biden act to fight soaring rents. So we talked before about the Federal Reserve was increasing interest rates. So it's affecting everybody. Tenants need immediate action from the White House to regulate rent and provide more certainty for millions of people struggling to make ends meet. And, you know, this goes back to rent control as well. I mean, my parents' generation in Boston had rent control. My parents' generation in New York City had rent control. By the time I was of adult renting age, they didn't have that anymore. And that's a big part of the problem. There's no rent stability either. The landlords can increase the rent as much as they want. Now, this comes from Brett Wilkins. The Federal Reserve aggressive interest rate hikes ignore corporate landlords' role in creating and maintaining this crisis. This is important. President Joe Biden has the authority to take executive action and direct agency level action to regulate rent. People's Action noted this in a new report entitled, The Rent is Still Too Damn High. Do you guys remember the rent is too high guy? For example, the publication explains the president can direct the Federal Housing Finance Agency to impose rent controls on borrowers of federally backed mortgages, which would apply to approximately 43.8 million rental units, rental units, immediately slowing down rental inflation. Federal agencies also have a role to play. For example, the Department of Housing and Urban Development can work with municipalities, localities, and nonprofit housing pro providers to incentivize authorities to increase the housing supply, create more mixed income units, and develop social housing that is kept permanently affordable by its dedicated preservation and cap cost outside of the private market. Key here, you have to keep it outside of the private market. Although overall inflation slowed to 7.1% in November, the lowest level since last December rents are nearly 8% higher now than they were a year ago, according to consumer price index data. That's the biggest single year increase in 40 years. While private rental data on leases may show prices have fallen in recent months, rents are still well above pre-pandemic levels. This is what I was trying to explain to people. This is what I was trying to explain to people. Not only that, but there were some landlords there. They were in certain cities that said that they would not increase the rent and they were still increasing the rent during the pandemic. That happened in Somerville. Massachusetts, by the way. Big problems. The national median rent for a one bedroom is now 21.4% higher than it was just prior to the pandemic in February 2020, meaning that the median renter is paying $204 more per month. People's Action also took aim at the U.S. Federal Reserve, which on Wednesday raised interest rates for the seventh time this year. A move to slow the economy, the experts say, disproportionately harms borrowers, retirees, and low-wage workers and could lead to a recession. And here's Jake Johnson again. I just talked about him on RBN. Rent inflation is a key driver of core inflation. The Federal Reserve's aggressive interest rate hikes Ignore corporate landlords' role in creating and maintaining this crisis 
and will hurt tenants. People's Actions Home Guarantee campaign director Tara said in a statement that millions of Americans still cannot afford their largest bill every month, the rent. Tenants need immediate action from the White House to regulate rent and provide more certainty for millions of people struggling to make ends meet. Okay. That is the challenge that is being put in front of Joe Biden. There is no control over these landlords. There seems to be no one that can stop them from increasing the rent. Like I told you, we had that rule here in Somerville, Massachusetts. We had that rule where they were not allowed to increase the rent. Landlords were still increasing the rent. So there's no, I don't know, there's no accountability here. There's no rules that are really followed. The landlords do what they want. You know, some of these landlords, we call them slum lords because that's just what they are. And there's no rent stabilization, which means if they increase the rent, they can increase it as much as they want. We don't have rent stabilization here. It's a problem. And I'm sorry when people like Marty Walsh, who at the time was my mayor, when he comes forward and he says, we can't go back to rent control in Boston. Why the hell not? It's not just a problem in Boston, as you saw in that article by Common Dreams. And the question that you need to start asking yourself is this, can Americans keep up with rising rents? I don't think so at the pace that things are going. Here's a video clip here. I want you to see this. Can Americans keep up with rising rent? I don't think that they can if we continue on this trend. Listen to this. They have kids and we don't know what happened. He's a victim from here and no find a new home for my kids and for us. This is very, very um, traumatic. When I came uh, to New York 15 years ago, I live uh, one block away, so I like uh, this neighbor. It's the quiet and the nice uh, neighbor. When we move here, my wife and my kids, they are young. So keep in mind, he said 15 years ago when he first moved to New York. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. We're going to fast forward past that too. Because this is where we get into the gentrification issue as well. So here's someone who's a tour guide in New York. So when the pandemic came, the city's closed completely completely closed. So when the pandemic come, the city is closed, completely closed. No travel t people, or no tourists, and lost completely my income. Geraldo and his wife were $12,100 behind on rent at the height of the COVID pandemic. I want to show you something really quick, guys. Look at this. So this is him sitting in front of his apartment. Look at the living conditions that people have in America. And I know, yes, this is New York City, but it still, it should not matter. In one of the wealthiest countries in the world, why do you live, why do we have to live like this? Look at the, look at the exterior, you guys. Look at the door. You see this? What is happening? And this is not his fault. This is not to shame him. This is what has what greed and capitalism has done to the United States. Do you see this? Why do people have to live like this in this country? Absolutely ridiculous. All right, here we go. I feel very, very scared about that because increase the rent almost 100 percent 
and obviously we can pay. If a victim from here, we can move from, you know, sometimes going to the father's family or something, but we don't have any family here. In the United States of America, see, this should have never happened. They should have never been allowed to increase those rents during the pandemic, but they were doing it. He said the rent increased 100%, you guys. Absolutely ridiculous. Candleboat says poverty is an open air prison. I, I hear it. I feel you. I feel you. By the way, notice he said he came to this, he came here 15 years ago, came to the country. Someone who came to the United States probably to have the American dream. And then they get here and they realize this dream is only for certain people, usually for people that already come for money, usually. Right now we share the one room apartment. So the kids um, sleep in one room and we are share the living room for sleep. If we look in another apartment and two rooms or three rooms, it's so, so, so expensive. Here's someone that has a family and they have a one room apartment. By the way, this is not uncommon in New York City. Uh, you're basically living in a shoebox. But again, like I said, no one should have to live like that in this country. And there was a time when I thought that you should. When I lived in New York, I was just like, okay, this is the way it is. Everything's small, so we just live in a little shoebox. I never stopped and questioned, but why is that? And why do people just accept it? Well, there's a lot of people that live in the city, so you just have to have a small apartment. Bullshit. Bullshit when I see people who are millionaires have a whole penthouse for themselves. It's ridiculous. And you have to stop at some point and you have to ask yourself that question. Why do most people just accept it and just say, well, this is just the way it is. Terrible, terrible. In a city that has over 300,000 millionaires and people have to live this way. Increased by 41%. Crazy. I don't know if I take a, another apartment for maybe 2,500 now, maybe I don't know how much is the next year or the next month or the next, I don't know. So this is why I about to worry to move a new apartment. Then you have to come up with three months rent all over again and start the process from the beginning. It's a damn shame. The other worry is about to the big tent. So because the obvious the landlord waiting for the rent. I am a member of the Make the Road New York, so they helped me to fill the form of the program. I'm glad this worked out for him. We had that same program here in, in Massachusetts. At that time, 80% of the applications were denied. People that were applying for rental assistance. 80% of the applications were denied. I'm like, did you guys even look at the applications? Or are you just like, eh? Crazy, man. We need the protection for the community for the landlords or the commercial prices not increase like, I don't know, 150%. His landlord recently agreed to raise the rent by only $200, which is still an 18% increase. The fuck, man? So it's like the landlords say that they got to raise the rent because the property rent goes up and they have to pay, you know, the company, whatever company owns the property, they have to pay them more. This is where we need to start following the dots. Who are the companies that own the properties? Because BlackRock and Vanguard's been buying up a lot of shit. And once you follow those dots, then you see who really holds all the cards. Then you'll understand why. 
We are having to live the way that we live. It is disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. So match this to that Common Dreams article. This is why they are demanding that the president step in. This is why. Crazy stuff. Let me go to some of the comments here. Thanks for the super chat, Colin. Doesn't Chelsea Clinton own a condo in NYC that takes up a city block? I believe so. I think I read that somewhere as well. So much wealth concentrated at the top. And then you have people like Corrado, him and his family live in a one room apartment. Jonathan says, I'm a teacher and I had to take a high interest loan in order to avoid eviction. It's hurting even those in the professional class. That's right. Adam says, because they keep you working so fast and long, you don't got time to question it. That's another thing too, why people don't stop and, and think about it. 